I know what you're thinking. There's professional Sea of Thieves? And the answer to that question is, kind of. While there's no massive in-person world championship league like there are for a lot of other games, there are a couple smaller player-made leagues where the best players in the world go to battle it out and find out who is the best pirate among them. I have some ultra sweaty friends who compete in the biggest of these leagues, known as the Legacy Brawl Hub. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking you guys on a journey of what quote unquote professional Sea of Thieves is all about, what it entails, and what it was like competing in two of the scrims against some of the sweatiest bastards I've ever met in my life. So without further ado, let's roll the shitty intro and get right in to this video. So it was your average Tuesday night for me, I was studying, doing what needed to be done for school, when all of a sudden, the famed Discord sound alerted me to a message from one of my oldest Sea of Thieves friends. He was inquiring whether or not I would be available to participate in a weekly scrim. Given my many hours in this game and legendary exploits, it's obvious why he would come to me because of my immense talent. So I agreed and then was subsequently shot down by another friend of mine named Angel. So fuck you, Angel. We then agreed that I would play in the scrims the following day. It wouldn't be Legacy Brawl Hub scrims, but it would still be scrims against the same people as the Legacy Brawl Hub, so it would end up being the same level of competition. So the next day rolls around, which means it's time to get sweaty. I join into the crew about halfway through the sup up phase. Before matches, each ship needs to go around and collect a certain amount of supplies, separating them into storage crates so that each ship can have an equal amount of supplies for each of the matches that night. This process usually takes about an hour. This phase of the match was a good opportunity for me to really understand and get to know my team, understand what goes through the minds of professional Sea of Thieves players, understand their play style, as well as learn all the callouts and really wrap my head around the level of intelligence that I was dealing with here. It'll probably take me like 30 seconds to get back to it. You know, it's like LeBron James. He hasn't shot a basket in a while, but the second he dunks, he's good. That's that's what's going to happen here. Yes. You all stand back in Heard. glory. I finished this rice. The guy from the guy from the fighting game? What? Exactly. Oh, the, from, from PGA, right? The, the golf guy, right? And he golfs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Gonna go score I don't know if you guys are sarcastic or stupid. Wait what, are, oh, wait, what are you guys gonna LeBron, have LeBron like? James, right? That dude's the, the football player. No, no, no. He's in the NHL. The NHL? I thought he was a quarterback. No. CHS. Oh. You guys. Yeah, he, what be, you, he plays midfield he might be for the Barcelona. Golf guy. Oh, that guy, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, okay. It was around this moment where I realized I might be in a bit of trouble. Once we had collected enough supplies, all the ships on the server headed over to the Lagoon of Whispers, which was the starting point for this match. And on the way over there, I feel like now is a good time for me to explain to you how the matches work, the crew dynamic, what everyone's role on a ship is, how winners are determined, just all the, all the underlying information about quote-unquote professional Sea of Thieves. As for the matches, the premise is fairly simple. There are five competing ships, all with an equal number of supplies. The last ship left floating wins. There is a limited map area that you are allowed to compete in. This map area shrinks as the game progresses. Should you accidentally step outside the barrier, you have one minute to get back inside. If you don't, you are eliminated from the match. There's a bunch of other rules they have for specific situations, but that's the general gist. Last man standing, shrinking map, limited supplies. As for the crew dynamic, it's slightly different for each ship, but the general roles are as follows. There is the helm. This person is at the head of the ship. They steer it, they control it. It's their job to make sure the ship's in position, they bark the orders, they decide on the game plan, they decide on when to attack. So in general, they would be considered the captain of the ship. Next up, we have the bilge. 
This person is generally the most disliked on the crew as they are banished to their cold, murky dungeon below deck and told not to show their face until it is bone dry down there. The bilge's main objective is obviously to keep the ship from sinking. They're very skilled at repairs, buckets, they can keep a lot of water out of the ship, and if this person calls for the crew's help, it is all hands on deck, because the ship's safety is the number one priority. The third position on a galleon is the flex position. This position is filled by someone who's a pretty well-rounded player, as they are responsible for being on the second cannon, as well as being just as good of a bilge as the actual bilge in order to keep the ship afloat should there be a lot of holes down below. And the final position on a galleon, which is the position I will take, is the main cannon. Generally speaking, this person is a very, very good cannon shot. They are on the first cannon on the galleon, which means they have the first angle, the first shots, and it is important that they can hit them. It is also important that this person is great at close quarters PvP, as if there is a boarding opportunity presented, the main cannon and the flex will generally be the ones sent to do the damage. And while there are a lot more specifics about each position, such as who gets the special balls, who raises what sail, who uses the harpoon, that is the very basic role of each of the members of the galleon. And now that you have an understanding of how the matches work and how the galleon dynamic works, I think it is time that we hop into some real professional Sea of Thieves matches. Or at least scrims. Once all the ships had met up at Lagoon of Whispers, the supplies were all put on the ref boat, which is the white boat in the center, divided up equally among the teams, and once we were all in the proper configuration and ready to start, the bots in each of our channels let us know in a very unique way that the match was beginning. Fairy Man Simulator, what is this? What? Oh my god! Shut up, I want to hear this for the, the match turn begins that, right? in 3, 2, <laughs> oh my god. 1, go. Jeez, I'm glad you like it. You're welcome. <laughs> That's Heard. amazing. Heard. I love that. My Heard, stop the backbite. Stop the backbite. <laughs> Is this an MVP? Yeah. <laughs> Once the excessively loud bagpipe music had stopped, it was free reign and we were allowed to fire. We immediately opened fire on the purple ship to our port side. They seemed a bit confused about when the start was and being the assholes that we were, we had to take full advantage of this fact. Upon engaging in a broadside with them, they swiftly turned off, but not before we had a chance to go for a boarding attempt. I was able to hit the ladder on this boarding attempt and get their anchor dropped after a little bit of perseverance. And thanks to a mix of general confusion and them being pinched between two teams, Purple sank relatively quickly. That's they awesome. sunk! They, they, they sunk. sunk! What the fuck? I'm, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, just shots left. Shots I'm, left. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, it's hard. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> they Texas are... comes in here and rolls a fucking team like it's nothing. Is that... What in the world? At this point, I think I realized the magnitude of my talent. As with the magic touch of Bandit Banks, ships were sinking in record time. The next five minutes roughly were spent exchanging broadsides with ships of varying colors. In the end, green got the worst out of all of these broadsides, which led to this happening. The green team has left the match. After this, we realized that the yellow ship was backed into a corner. So we parked a distance away from them and began barraging them, knowing that they couldn't go anywhere without going out of bounds. However, this was where our crucial mistake was made, as we didn't notice Blue moving into a deadly position on us until it was too late. By the time we had drop sails and turned to get out of that position, it was too late. Blue got the first shots on us, and we were on the defensive for the rest of that match. It definitely didn't help when Yellow came to join the tag team, and by the end of it, we ended up having to get forced out of bounds as the zone shrank, which led to this. Should we ask them? Your like, boat has or... been out of bounds for too long. Okay. Yeah, Please yeah, we can do it. Now. While this first match ended in heartbreak, I was confident going into the second match that we would take the dub. So after the previous match finished with Yellow winning, all the ships met back up at the referee's boat, redistributed supplies, and waited 
for the second match to start in the same loud fashion as the first. Oh my god, bro. That is loud on 50. And the match will begin in three, two, one, go. <laughs> my ear balls. <laughs> The first few minutes of this match were spent exchanging broadsides with ships of varying colors. The first critical moment came here when we were able to force green through these rocks and out of bounds. This led to them being in a pretty bad position for an upcoming broadside. At this same moment, yellow was converging on us, and we exchanged a quite harsh broadside with them. At the end of this broadside, we had caused more damage, forcing Yellow to turn off. This gave us an opportunity to turn back around on green and finish the job. Watch this chop. Angel, early you oh, early reball, one creep. Coming. I put a shit ton of lowers into him. Uh, they're mid, mid zone. Oh, we're chilling, we're chilling. Red team, you are out of bounds. They're out of Please bounds. Should I go and just keep them? The they sank. Uh, sank. Alright. So I... Now that the green ship had been transformed into a submarine, we had to have a really good broadside with yellow. This is gonna be epic. They hit our front mast. Alright, I'm I'm turning the boat hard right. Just, yeah, we're pushing them. Uh, in the broad. Your boat has been out of bounds for too long. You had four kills, oh, what? Dude, we, we Wait, we were out of bounds? Longer. I guess so. What? Uh, the okay. red team has uh, left the match. Ah, right. uh, mulch. Yeah, that's actually what happened. Epic broadside with green going toe-to-toe -to -toe with yellow, everyone hitting shots, and it turned out we were out of bounds for too long. God damn it, Mulchy. But with that came the end of the matches I was playing that day. Both matches we ended up losing by being disqualified, the first match coming in third place, and the second match coming in fourth. Not a great overall showing, but... Honestly, competitive Sea of Thieves is actually pretty fun, and if it is something that you would be interested in, then I can definitely recommend checking it out. Just ensure that you get yourself a better helm than Mulchi. But with that, I do hope you enjoyed this journey of what it's like to play highly competitive Sea of Thieves. If you do want to see me go on more scrims with these guys, let me know in the comments below. I'll be sure to make another video about it. But... Thank you very much for stopping by. It's been your boy Bandit Banks, and I will catch you all in the next one.